Hi folks, thanks for joining me for this week's still water tutorial. Uh, this pattern's for a little bit later in the year when I hope we'll be back on the water. It'll fish high in the water this one. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the vise is a Hanak 280 barbless hook. It's at size 10. This is a medium wire hook and it is in black nickel. The thread we're going to be using today is UTC at 140 denier and it's black. So I've already uh, added some wax to my thread and I'm going to catch on just in behind the eye and run my thread up approximately an eighth of an inch. I'm just going to remove my rat's tail at this point and I'm going to add the breather at this stage. So what I'm using for the breather is some ultra dry yarn from Fish On. Now when it comes out of the packet it's it's fairly thick so what I like to do with this is with my comb just comb out the fibres so I can see better what I'm doing and then I'm going to take just a small amount off of that strand. Now I'm going to leave it at a fairly decent length so I can work with it later. Now I'm not going to catch it right in at the eye because that would leave me no room. So I'm just back for the eye when I've caught this in. And a couple of wraps to hold it down. Now I'm going to cut at an angle so I can increase my taper. Now the next thing I'm going to do is catch in my rib and the rib I'm going to be using is flexi floss and I've already taken a strand off the big bunch I've got. I'm going to catch that in at the same time as I'm coming down. Now make sure you've got it well trapped in with your thread and if you haven't pre-waxed your thread then I suggest you do so because it just gives it a lot more purchase and as, a, as you can see I'm stretching it out now so that I can get a nice smooth body on my fly. So I've brought that just to the back end of the hook, just as the bend's starting actually. And what I want to do is flatten out my thread and you can do that simply by twisting your bobbin anti-clockwise and then I'm going to come all the way back up with my flattened thread and this just makes sure that you get a nice neat finish to your body. So that's as far as I need to come. Uh, next, so with the flexi floss, what I like to do is I start it very tight, try not to clip the point like I just did because that will damage your flexi floss. Once you've started at each turn, I just loosen up the tension on the flexi floss just a little. And what that does is it gives me that segmentation that I'm looking for. Because it's black on black, you won't see much difference in the color. But the size of the segmentation, you can see it's steadily getting thicker as I come up the body of the fly. And then, as I near the top, I've hardly got any tension on the flexi floss now. And I'm going to capture that in. Fairly happy with how that's gone. Two or three turns just to hold it into place. Then I'm going to come in front of my floss and snip away with my snips. Okie dokie. Next, I'm going to protect that rib with some UV resin. So I'll just get a little bit onto my brush. I don't want a massive thick coat because at the end of the day, this fly is meant to fish much higher in the water column than say a Barker buzzer or one of the fancy buzzers that I've had um, coats and coats of varnish. This is just for protection of the rib. Just take your time 
make sure you get complete coverage and I can still see that I've maintained that segmentation okay before I go on I'll just cure that off and I'm fairly happy with that profile actually it's just got the uh, the nice taper of a, a natural buzzer just bear with me while I cure this off yeah I've not fished for so long now that uh, I fear I'll forget how to put a reel onto a rod so when we all do get back on the water hopefully um, the fish will be really obliging and uh, they'll be much higher in the water column than they would be in March and April anyway next I've digressed I'm going to bring my thread just to where my breather starts and what I'm looking for next is this now what it is is a partridge feather and I've stripped away uh, all the, the rubbish from the bottom and what I want to do is bring the tip to a point and I want to capture that in now some of the feathers are going to spring back don't worry too much about that what springs away will spring away and what stays will stay okay so fairly happy with that now next I'm going to add some uh, cheeks wing buds so I'm using the Comp Candy um, Goose Pirates and this one's the Flow Sunburst I've already picked a couple and I don't need to be overly worried about it I'm going to tie in my side first just a couple of turns to hold it into place and then I'm going to tie in your side now I need to I'm not overly worried about matching these up even because I'm going to I'm going to come in with my snips and tidy them all up so once you've got that into place you can then come in with your snips remove your waist and what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim down my bias on my side to about an eighth of an inch and you'll not be able to see me do this but I'm going to um, do the same on the other side just bear with me so pick up your waist take it away and I'm going to do the buy it on your side just the same so about an eighth of an inch left so that's a good good match so I've cut all that in next I'm going to come in with a little bit of sorry you can't see the label here but this is called uh, SLF Prism dubbing uh, I don't know if it's available anymore I think the uh, the company went, went, might have went the way of the dodo but I've still got some in my, my kit so I'm going to use this it's quite a easy to work with kind of dubbing it's got a bit of bling in it and I'm just going to push that up towards the thorax so there we go adding that dubbing in bring it all the way to where your breather is now next grab your stock just encourage that to bend over and capture in your wing case a couple of turns all it needs then bring back everything including your breather to the front of the fly then you can come in with your snips
and carefully remove your stock. Now before we go on, what I want to do is add a half hitch to the front of the hook here. And again, I'm going to attempt to use the tool of the devil, so bear with me. And I think that's whip finished. Uh, if you're not comfortable with a whip finish, don't be worrying. It won't, it's not the end of the world. I managed for 30 years without one. And just come in, take away your waste. Okay, so that's looking not too bad. Now, what I want to do next is I'm going to open up my vise and I want to add a bit of UV resin to the fibres on my wing case. Now there's a practical point to this, the, the fibres are quite delicate and you don't want all your hard work to be gone asunder after you've caught one fish. So just added a little bit of resin to my thread as well, then I'm going to come in and cure the top. Then, likewise on the bottom. Then it's just a case of getting the length of your breather to what you require. I've gone for just over eight, an eighth of an inch. Then I can come in with my Velcro brush Open that out, just turn the vise round, rough out my dubbing a bit, any, any strands that are too long, just pull them away, and there you've got a nice wee buzzer for later in the year when the fish are up in the water and we're allowed back out in boats hopefully. So that's it. Thanks very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please think about clicking the button and I'll see you all next time.